Um, for me, that helps with holding the ball with your fingertips and sitting instead of with the palm of your hand. The palm of your hand, when you try and toss the ball, you'll end up flicking it with your fingertips. So hold it uh, to start off in your fingertips and he's guiding the ball up. So for me, I think that's, that's the most important part of the serve is ball toss. Yeah, well, uh, when you see him doing it there, I, what I was hoping what he would do was actually go to where he releases the ball. He releases the ball at the highest point which means that he gets that extension out of the left that he needs to be able to get extension out of the right. I see a lot of you guys letting the ball go at a very early stage of the toss, which means that it's very difficult to get that left arm to go with that toss, so you leave and go left, which brings you down left instead of upright. I mean, if you had communicated that with me before we walked well, I out here. I thought you knew. I thought you knew. Sorry. First of all, first of all, first of all, first of all I thought you know I thought, where I'm I going with this. All right, this is, well, but the thing is that then that's why I, we need to kind of clear that area because I want you to hit a serve and then you'll see how he extends, not like he showed there. Then half toss. Go. <laughs> all right. You're going you're gonna to get hurt. You're going to get hurt over there. Go ahead, perfect, stay there. <laughs> so again, guys, nice and relaxed. Uh, as Michael mentioned, for me, I'm six foot five. I want to take advantage of, of, of my height, and that's extending, like you said. So my contact should be here. I don't want contact back here or over here, and that's got to do with the ball toss. So you notice his hand, is, is, he can't get higher with the left. And, and what happens then is I, I see a lot of guys, whether it's, you know, you have that higher arm, I all, sometimes get a feeling that people feel like they have to get rid of the left to get the right to go forward. So they pull that separately yes. and then again pull themselves down left instead of staying up. So try to feel that when you're here with the left, the left is done in the sense of that it doesn't create anything. It's the right coming forward that takes the left out of its, yes. out of its yeah. uh, position. Yeah, like Michael said, when I start... Sorry? Where's your left hand go when it comes down? Well, it comes I mean, in, it, it comes, kind of falls yeah, in here, and it sometimes it brings it over here. Out of the way, just, just naturally out of the way. Don't don't think about like pulling it out. Yeah. Like Michael said, you want to keep it up there, and and right on contact, be here. You don't want to because what happens if you bring it down before contact, you drag this down, and then you rack it. You're going to drag everything down. So let, let let the right decide after you're at the highest point. Uh, forehand, um, and and again, he's extreme at at, at using the left. Uh, I'm old school and he's old school where we point to the ball. It's almost like you're guiding the ball in by saying, come here, come here, I'm going to hit you. Uh, today, today you see a lot of players that bring the racket back this way or they bring it over with the left hand coming much more across. Uh, and it's all about getting the shoulder to turn. Because if you're neutral with the, the arm, it's not a natural move to come around. Uh, I like this personally because I feel like I have much more freedom in the rotation to get that arm out of the way. Whereas here, I feel like I'm getting caught. And, and a lot of times you see when, when, when you're not cleaning this area quickly, you'll be hitting forehands like this. Yeah. And that's no good. Okay. So I personally, and you do the same, you can show one forehand area. The example Michael said, you guys, um, you know, naturally, if you've got your hand here, you're not making contact out here. You're making contact this way. You know, I, I remember on the first day I tried telling Willie, Willie, he's hitting his, Forehand with his willy out like this. <laughs> and then I was told, don't fucking say anything to him. He doesn't miss the ball, so I apologize. But anyone except me, you want that left hand out there or, or vice versa, right hand, because that's where I want to make contact. You know, have it there. So no matter where I'm moving on the court, my racket is back and that left hand is right there because that's exactly where I make contact. So here, make contact here. And, and, and so go ahead. No. Uh, and again, it's also a situation where you want to try to keep the left out there. Don't pull it out of the way for the right to come forward. You want to stay there and try to let the right, again, get that rotation through the shot. Uh, not only to keep the balance and, and the, the strength out of the rotation, it also keeps your head in place. If you start throwing the left out of the way, a lot of times the head will come with you and you're playing, not having any chance to, uh, to see the ball. I know it's going to be times when you guys are going to want to hit the ball harder. And the problem is, as soon as we feel like we want to hit the ball harder, we try to muscle the ball, and then everything goes out of control. Um, nothing should change. The only difference is, if you want to hit the ball harder, your racket head acceleration should be higher. That's the only thing that's different. Besides, when you're warming up, then hitting the ball hard, nothing changes. If you remember from what Rory said yesterday, everything comes from rhythm. Power comes from rhythm. 
Um, don't try and muscle the ball. As soon as you muscle the ball, Mike was saying you got to start pulling off the ball. You see the body's going to start going everywhere, and you got to be completely out of control. What about elbow heights on the forehand? You, you're kind of up. Like yeah, but that's that's here. the right arm. Yeah, that's we're talking about the opposite. The right arm. Right. Yeah. You know what? Whatever yeah, yeah. you. The most important thing is everyone has their technique on their forehand. Whatever your technique, whatever works for you do you know whatever happens whatever you guys want to do here do here but the most important thing for me is you got a bigger backswing then you got to put it back earlier so you don't get caught and then like i said get ready with that left hand no matter what you guys want to do you want to pull it back this way you hit your forehand this way that's no problem you just got to make sure normally when when the, my opponent hits the ball and you watch all, all all the guys play as soon as whatever happens straight away is the racket goes back and then they've got the full running with the racket back they're not running this way and then all of a sudden they're going to do this last second they're running with the racket back so whichever way is comfortable for you to take it back you do that but the most important thing is racket back early and then you have that left hand out there preparing where you want to make contact backhand show that beautiful backhand for me i'm, I'm a single-handed backhand so for, for the left hand is incredibly important for me in my backhand because that's what takes the racket back for me i don't take it back to my right hand i take it back with my left hand and then, you know, whichever way you want to take it, um, you know, your technique again is, is your thing. But I take it back, I wait, I hold it there, and then I let it through. And then as I make contact, I kind of go against what I'm doing with my right hand. That's that with, with the power. Um, I don't bring it through this way or I drag it down. So for me, I bring it through and I kind of balance it out. Uh, my, my opposite hand, if that makes sense. Yeah, there are some great backhands, uh, Thomas Muster being one of them, where he, he is his neutral with his right arm, keeping along the side. And I'm not sure if uh, one of some of the older guys here that have one-handed backhands, if they do the same. But I, I would recommend that if you have the opportunity to, to release and come back, it, it's going to take away the, the, the urge to come around too much in the shoulders. Because the backhand, one-handed backhand slides or tops in it, you really should be able to stay close the whole way through and still face the side fence when you're done with it. You probably won't do it when you're playing because you want to get into the next shot and, and come around with, uh, with the other foot, so to speak, and then move yourself back in. But you should be able to stay there, and I think that that's a great way to balance your shot by releasing and getting the left hand to come back. Um, and double-hander? You're a double-hander. Double-hander, so mine sucks. <laughs> Even just looking at it. Bow, bow. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're coming to the volley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so with, right. with, with a two-handed uh, backhand, again, I I feel that the, the control of the racket head where it goes is going to be controlled with the left. So it's not like I'm going to feel like I'm doing this depending on where I'm going. So this is bringing it down. This is bringing it up here. And I, I think a great way that you can be right-handed um, dominant or left-handed dominant on your two-hand backhand. And I in the in, when I used to play when I used to play good. I used to be right hand dominant, so I would let go. Now I'm much more left handed. And if you're left handed, I, it, it's a great way to, to see what your left hand is doing. Meaning that if I, if I feel good about my forehand, right handed, I'm gonna try to get the same feel with my left hand. So how do I use that left hand the same way and then add the right to get the feel of, of a good swing? Uh, so that depends on if you're right handed or left handed. turn I see a lot of people when they prepare they're preparing here up and preparing most of the, the, the returns are going to be played from a lower point unless you play somebody where you know that I'm gonna have an opportunity to swing high and big yes that's one thing but most of the time when you play returns you're gonna be playing from a much lower position so think about that when you play where you are starting out to be able to, to shorten the swings on harder surface. all right so we're gonna go volley well, you're the volley man. Um, volley, okay. Volley, uh, I was with Rory yesterday and he spoke a lot about um, basics and doing drills for, for, for uh, rhythm and technique. And, and volley for me, um, I just feel like you guys are overplaying everything, like overthinking and everything. Hey, hey, I was going to get to the left hand. Right. Anyway, <laughs> they want to play as well. 
What? They want to play as well. All right, here we go. Um, <laughs> you know what? You freaking got me off my my, my <laughs> hey, exactly what I was trying to do. Amazing to say. Um, okay, so left hand, left hand the volleys for me. I'm a right hander. So again, I'm only bringing it out. I'm not going to be swinging the ball, but my left hand is there, kind of to guide the ball. It's not pointing as much, so much or a, as extreme as the forehand, but it, but it kind of still is. So I'm right there and I want to make contact out here. I don't have my, my left hand here next to my body and moving this way, right? It's out here balancing because I'm just pulling my racket up, balancing and this way on the forehand. Again, so it's right here, make contact and the left hand is a little bit different, on the back hand, sorry, is a little bit different. Bring it back and it just stays right there. It's it's not dropping. Grip? Same grip both sides? Always, always the same grip, yeah, always the same grip. But again, the, the, the left hand is just is very stable when I make contact in the ball. Keeping everything very simple. Right here. It's not going back as much, you know, different on the on the uh, on the slice. It's nice and simple, it just stays there. No, notice how he still uh, he, he exaggerated one and said, I'm not doing too much of this, but notice when he does get in there and go, gets compact, there's still a move yeah. in the left to control that forward path, getting strength from the upper body and the shot. Uh, I'll say a couple of things here about controlling the racket with the left hand in the volley. If, if the natural flow of the right armors is that you will take the racket and it will come up to your back end. This, this is a natural flow of how you put the racket up. You wouldn't go or like this. You'd come over to the back end, which means that a lot of you just get into that position and whether you control the racket at a lower position or a higher position, you're always towards the backhand. If you play against somebody that sees that, they're always going to go high to your forehand volley because it's too far for you to travel to get a regular volley on it, so you'll start swinging and you'll be in trouble. Again, that's why it's so important to have that left controlling the racket where it is. So you, I, I still want to I still want to keep the natural flow of the arm going into the racket, but since I'm here naturally, I then want to bring it over towards the center. I hear a lot of teaching pros saying, well, you've got to go neutral. And to me, if you go neutral, I have to manipulate the wrist. And all of a sudden, that's an awkward position for me. So I want to push it to as close to the middle as I can come without manipulating the wrist. And I feel like I have pretty much the same distance to both sides. And the thing about the left here also, is that, as Mark says, he's bringing it over. But he's not bringing it over to bring the left over. He's bringing the left over to get the shoulders to go with him. You know, if you have the time and the space, you can play volley and come across you'll get that shoulder turn for free. But a lot of times when we play, we don't have time or space to do that. That's why it's so important to get the left shoulder to come, come over there is with the hand. Again, trying to play volley, just getting the shoulder is not gonna work. So that's why we get that left to come with us <coughs> in the volley as well. Uh, uh, one, one more thing about what I, what I <coughs> excuse me. Having the, the, the opportunity to be leaning a little bit towards my backhand helps me when you get a shot hit right at you. If I'm neutral and I'm manipulating my wrist, I have to turn that back into place to save a shot right at me. If I lean a little bit to the backhand, that's going to be a natural flowing motion to come into the shot right at you. What do you do for the really low volume? If you're starting to turn, let's say, in the service line and that soft, low shot over the net comes in, is there any difference in technique with the volley? Well, you got to obviously, if it's low, you're coming in, someone's at your feet. You just got to get down. And everything, you know, just get down lower. But everything, everything's exactly the same. You just got to get lower to meet that shot. But when you changes. have the opportunity, you want to try to keep the racket head above the wrist in your volley. Okay. And if you can get down there and do that, you're going to be in pretty good shape. You're going to have a strong position. Uh, overhead. Overhead. First thing I do when the overhead comes up is boom. I'm straight up here. My, my swing is abbreviated, I'm not, I'm not going to do like my normal serve, so I'm straight back and I turn, it's simple, straight back and I turn and I'm pointing, I'm pointing the whole time, I'm pointing, it's windy, nothing changes, my, move, my feet are moving but I'm pointing, I'm always pointing and never taking the, uh, my eye off the ball. And, and that is so important and, and, and because we, when we talk about the serve, then you have the opportunity to, to be disciplined in, well, because I have to toss the ball so it has a purpose. In the overhead, it's like, well, I'm going to hit it with a right, and pretty much 90% of all amateurs don't get higher than this. A lot of you, yeah, when they're left you guys are pointing. Or right. You think you're got, pointing, but your your left hand's here. You're actually kind of doing this. You're not really pointing. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
And again, and again, getting that left extended as high as you can will pretty much automatically turn your turn Shoulder. your shoulders. Yeah. It will keep your head up, and you'll have the same opportunity as you would in the serve if you got everything up in the right place. Yeah. Not right. only do you want to turn your shoulder, of course your whole body's turning. But like I said, you guys are doing this, not really pointing, and you're smashing the ball, and I can see your chest. I should never be able to see your chest. Yeah, and that's why you're collapsing and you're kind of running backwards, kind of falling off the smash. So sideways, like you said, that I point out my whole shoulder turns and my whole body is actually turning. That way I can move where, where the smash is. You're just yeah. kind of doing this, and then it just collapses. Uh, I think that covers the left arm. I will say this one thing that has nothing to do with the, the left arm, but it has something to do with the overhead. Is that an overhead is only an overhead until it's not an overhead anymore. Okay? We see that ball come out of the opponent's racket. Uh, it's an overhead. Can't see the ball because of the sun. The ball is taken by the way. Uh, it's an overhead. That ball's coming in low. Uh, it's an overhead. <laughs> You see that ball come up as an overhead? Maybe it is, but if you see that it's not, change your mind. You don't have to hit an overhead because it looked like one from the start. Drop it in, hit a ground stroke, let it come down, hit a you know, volley, overhead off the ground, whatever. But you know, you have that opportunity to change your mind when you know it's not at the perfect position to hit an overhead. All right, boys. Good job. Good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Oh, the backhand overhead. It's over your head. Yeah. Well, I haven't thought about that one. Go ahead. Well, back, I mean, back what back are you doing with your left hand on tweeners? <laughs> backhand smash, I mean, I'm putting it back a little bit similar to the backhand volley, but I'm going back this way, right? If it's an overhead, it's going to be different to the volley. Normally, I'll just bring it here, so I'll come up this way. And I'm holding it, holding it. I mean, the back look, the backhand smash is all about strength. It's all about, it's one of, it's, it's one of the toughest shots. Um, in a tennis sport, and it's just all about strength. That's something you've got to practice um, more to do with um, the strength of your left, your, your right hand than to do with the left hand there, you know? But uh, if you can, don't hit any. Just get around it. <laughs>